stand up Applauso and receive with a shout of love. She's the one Spanish, he does the English. Yeah, he can't do it in his language. <laughs> he won't understand. Hallelujah. Good evening, everyone. Buenas noches. And how many people are happy tonight here? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We should do happy because the presence of God is here. Amen. Let's, for a moment, we close our eyes and feel the presence of God. Amen. And raise your hand if you can. Hallelujah. So we pray for thanksgiving to the Lord that His presence is here tonight. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I will sing a few verses of Psalm 103. So maybe you cannot understand my language, but you can feel the presence of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We do worship 
A same God. In the same place. Hallelujah. Amen. You, you are very blessed people. Because in my country, where are, I'm coming here, we don't have, we, some churches have the, like that uh, instrument, but many, majority of our churches don't have that kind of instrument and facility. You have nice sound system. In my country, many churches don't have. But they have their sound system, their throat and their voice. Amen. So you have a comfortable chair. But in our country, our people sit down on the floor like this. And we do worship. Amen. Woo! So I want to encourage you people. I'm not telling you uh, that all things to this degrade to my country. No, digo pa I proud to be a Pakistani Christian. But I want to encourage you. You have lots of blessing here. Amen. In our country, our Christian doing worship to the Lord in the bulls, in the shadows of bullets, bombs, in terrorism, they don't know. When somebody can do suicide bomb on your churches. But you people are very blessed people. You have a peaceful environment. You can do worship freely. When it came, when it came in your church, from this door, let me show me that's our church. And my eyes was wow. What a church. Because I never see that kind of big church in my country. So you are blessed people. Let's clap for your country and for your nation. So as we are from different nations, we will learn today about the power of praise and worship. Amen. We will learn that I will share the word of God. Maybe you listen many times. These verses, that topic. But we will try to learn a little bit from a different perspective. What is the power of praise and worship? How many people you have Bibles? Amen. Show your Bible. If you have Bible apps in your mobile, iPad, you can show it. Hallelujah. Many people have Bible that feel me happy. So we will I recite a couple of verses from Psalm 170 Psalm 170 Verse 1 and 2 Praise the Lord all you nation Extol him, all you people, for 
great is his love towards us and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. We read that scripture in the Bible. The Bible tells us, Praise the Lord, all you nations. And we said already that we are from different countries. Our nationality maybe is different. But our God is one. Bible never teaches us. Praise the Lord, all you pastors. Praise the Lord, all you Dominican public. Praise the Lord, the Pakistani people. God tells us here. Praise the Lord, all you nation. Amen. Hallelujah. So the example. We can see here, we are from different countries, different nationalities, and we are praising to our Lord. So here, in America, I don't know, you people know that, but I know in Pakistan. Here we learn how we can enter in the church. What Bible says? Because if we are going to do praise and worship in the church, how we should enter in the Bible? In the church. I see in my country. Let's suppose there is a door of the church. How we enter in our church for praise and worship, including me, I do also like this. I'm not a different person, a holiest person. I am like you, a man. I also do something like this. So this is the door of church. We enter the church. Sometimes I tell to Linda, obey how I look. We enter the church. Sometimes we say to each other, oh, how looks my hair and my spine? We enter the church. The man, sometimes we say, oh, my tie is better. Okay, I'm looking cool. We enter the church. For the woman, in my country, all over the world, they do makeup. So they, they watch home. Oh, I'm looking good, pretty, my hair. Okay. They can maybe, they, they can check their dresses. Oh, I'm looking beautiful in the church. Yeah. So I don't know how you enter the church. And you don't know how I enter the church. Only God and we know are one person more who is the usher on the door I think they know about that how we enter the church because they watch us out of the door so let's see what Bible says how we should enter in the worship in the church Psalm 100 I'm just gonna do the 20 minutes and then I can't do 40 minutes on second hour. Psalm 100, verse 4. Enter his gate with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Hallelujah. Entre por sus puertas con canciones de agradecimiento y sus patios con canciones de alabanza, agradeciéndole y bendigándole y bendigan y bendigan su nombre. So now, I don't know about you, and you don't know about me, 
We can check ourselves. How we enter in the church. By checking our dresses. Some people enter the church with lots of the thinking. Like this. I have to do what to that, I have to do that, I have to do that. Counting. So, let's check. And what Bible says here, we should enter in the church with thanksgiving. I also do many times. Not a once time. Many times. When I enter the church, I forget to thanks to the Lord. According to the Bible. So let we see ourselves and try. Because we are human, we should try and try again. So when we enter, we say thank you, Lord, for all your deeds that you have done in our world. And I tell you, that will be very strong of base of your worship. And that's the key to enter in worship. And that will be very helpful for you and for me too. The third thing is very important. Make yourself humble. Sometimes we enter in the church and we thought that we are very knowledgeable person. The other people don't know about the Bible or about the other knowledge. I am the best. And some people say maybe that I am the richest person in among other people. Maybe we say, oh, I'm the big teacher. So, I want to tell you that can, a crowd can be make a wall in your worship. You can you cannot do worship with crowd. So, Bible teaches us, let me see in the Bible what Bible says about that. Psalm 95. Psalm 95, verse 6. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. Vengan, postremos, inclinamos, orellamos ante el Señor, nuestro Creador. Here in your church, aquí en tu iglesia, I see, yo veo, you people do bow down, ustedes se orillan, like this, así como lo hacía ahora. And in my country, according to our tradition, la tradición de él, we do bow down, y ustedes se orillan, like this, se orillan de esa forma. So it's not a big matter, how you bow down? Because we have different cultures, different style. So, Bible says you should bow down. So, if you go to the contact, in the deep contact, you can see it's not mean only to bow down. It's mean to make yourself humble. Empty yourself. All your glory you should put in one side out of the church. And all your proud you should uh, send, uh, throw out of the church. When you enter in church, you should be empty. Like a simple man. For example, if you have a glass, if he is full, and if you go to a party, you say, oh, my cup is full. 
So nobody give you more water 